Uh, let me take a moment to introduce you to our next speakers. Our, our topic here uh, is really talking about co-creation. Co-creation to engage consumers and empower employees. Uh, and sort of the idea is thinking differently here in evaluating the customer experience, improving brand loyalty, and fostering customer engagement. And here to talk about this uh, with us this afternoon is AE Marketing Group founder and CEO Brian Walker and Network Health Chief Administrative, Administrative Officer Penny Ransom. So let me tell you a little bit about Brian. Uh, he is a uh, consumer brand and customer experience leader, a frequent speaker on topics ranging from emerging marketing trends to consumer engagement and co-creation. Brian has advised senior executives throughout the U.S., including uh, GE Healthcare, Blue Cross Blue Shield, uh, advocate and network health. And Penny has more than 15 years of experience in health plan research, marketing and administration, and as chief administrative, administrative officer, she leads the organization's efforts in marketing, brand experience, workplace culture, and planning. So please welcome, uh, with a big welcome, Brian and Penny. Thank you, everyone. I was in some sessions earlier today, and somebody was talking about the challenge of going about an hour before lunch, because he was concerned that people would start getting tired. And we have the job of going about an hour after lunch. So I'm sure everyone's getting a little tired and might need a little caffeine or something. So we'll try to keep this as energetic as possible. So what Penny and I are going to do for the next 15 minutes or so is, as Mike said, we're going to talk about co-creation and how you can leave here today and think a little bit more about all these great insights and ideas we've heard throughout the day, not just in our presentation, and apply a co-creation lens to it. And how you can take co-creation to dive at deeper insight into the consumer market that you look to try to tackle, uh, how you can design better products or services, or maybe the way you deliver those products and services today, how you can empower your employees, how you can boost brand loyalty, and customer experience. And if you're doing all of those things, ultimately your bottom line should improve as well. So as we think about co-creation and we think about our brand power balance today, something that I think we should clarify when we speak of co-creation is, I don't look at co-creation as a way to curate marketing content. I think that can become a byproduct of co-creation. Uh, but for purposes today, we're not talking about design competitions with customers or ad promotions or anything like that. Co-creation is truly about designing new experiences together with your marketplace. And as we think about the brand balance today, it's obviously made up of your company, which is folks like ourselves in research, marketing, insights, sales, operations, your products, everything that goes into your company. And then you obviously have the brand side uh, of the balance, which is the consumer. And when you think about the consumer, it's obviously your past, your current, or your future customers. And as we all know, we've heard a ton from today, uh, irregardless of who your customer is, the power balance has really shifted to the consumer. They have much more control over their brand, uh, their brand preference, the way they want to communicate, the way, the way they want to be cared for today. And I think one of the reasons why we have a great conference like uh, IIEX is because we all understand that legacy research can't keep pace with this dramatic shift. Uh, and as we think about some of that, I would liken using legacy research tactics to taking photographs with a Polaroid. Uh, now, a Polaroid sure is a camera. Uh, it'll do the job, but it's not necessarily the most reliable. It's not necessarily the most efficient. The picture quality isn't always the clearest. Uh, and you can't share it. And um, I'm a fan of Mad Men, and I know Don Draper loved his Polaroid. I think he called it a memory. Uh, but we know we can't be memories. Today we have to be forward facing. We have to be thinking more and more about who's tracking us uh, and what does that mean and how we can be different. Uh, but we still need to be able to get at consumer insights and how do we do that? And what obviously we need to do is tap into these ideas. Now ideas like a buzzword that we've heard a lot today that I won't repeat is everywhere. And when we think about that, uh, the challenge isn't ideas, because I'm sure if I asked you guys to throw out some ideas about how to improve a Polaroid, you would probably have a few good ones. But instead, what we need to think about is how can you put in place a process where you can actually take ideas and then build something from them? How can you look at ideas, and how can you sort through an idea that could be a nice-to-have 
versus a need to have? How do you take an idea and determine if it's viable? And how can you look inside your own organization and determine, is this something that we could even implement? Is it something we would want to implement? And that's where co-creation can really help you. Uh, and that's where co-creation can really bring back more brand power balance as well. So co-creation, what is it? Who's doing it? How can you use it? Uh, we've heard some great ideas today around research and insights and a number of different things. And co-creation is going to take that just a little bit further. Um, but before you begin any type of co-creation journey, you need to understand that it requires you to be vulnerable, much like standing up in front of a room full of people. You, you don't necessarily know what's going to happen when you put your brand out into the marketplace. But it's important that you do that and you hear what the market is saying. And it can be good, it can be bad, it could even be ugly. It could be about your products, your services, your employees. It could just be about your industry. But it's not enough to just hear what the market is saying. You have to truly listen to the marketplace. And then you have to be able to be willing to take people from outside and bring them into the walls of your organization. And this could be a small customer group. It could be a mix of customers and non-customers. Or it could just be non-customers in general. But your employees then have to be empowered to be able to work hand in hand in partnership with them to design and create something together. And the only way to do that is to set clear expectations to both your team and the market and the consumers and communicate those consistently. But ultimately, co-creation, whether it's very small or relatively large, requires commitment. Because as we all know, there's nothing worse that a brand can do is to say they're going to listen to the market or they're going to listen to patient satisfaction scores, and then you don't do anything about it. So when we think about commitment, and we think about partnership, and expectation setting, and communication, those are all the things that make relationships, whether they're personal or business, good relationships. It's what so many brands strive to do, but never quite achieve. Uh, and that's, again, where this process can help you. So you'll see co-creation, big and small, across virtually every industry today, including, obviously, healthcare. Uh, brands, big and small, are doing them on a lot of scales. Everyone from Network Health, which we're going to talk about here in a minute, to Domino's Pizza, to BMW, to J. Crew, And they're all seeing changes, uh, both in terms of brand loyalty, changes in performance, changes in experiences. And they're doing this with the market, and they're doing this with their customers, and they're doing it successfully. So I'm going to turn it over to Penny, uh, who, in addition to being one of the smartest and savviest uh, strategist I know is also one of the most fashionable. So I'm sure she'd like to talk about J. Crew's co-creation and fashion, but instead we're going to talk about network health and co-create Wisconsin. Thanks, Brian. So just to provide a little context about network health, because most of you probably have not heard of us, we are a health insurance company based in Appleton, Wisconsin that serves about 150,000 customers across the state. And we're owned by two of the premier health systems. So it's that provider-sponsored health system that's really becoming popular. We've been around for about 30 years. And when I got there four and a half years ago, there was a marketing department of one. And you're looking at her. So we've come a long way in four and a half years with a lot of help from Brian. And we, we decided, we started with a brand, determining what our brand promise was going to be. And it's that we're your trusted partner. And so we launched a campaign to end the jargon. We took, every employee took a pledge to stop using the jargon of health insurance because that's one of the things that makes it so confusing to people. And we did very well with that campaign. Our awareness and our preference numbers skyrocketed in a very short amount of time. But that wasn't the end because we knew that was just the beginning of our journey as we became a more powerful health plan in the state of Wisconsin. And so Brian approached me with, the concept of co-creation. And we talked about it for a while. He said, I think we should talk to millennials and baby boomers, because those are two really key, import, key groups for health insurers. And he said two things to me. I can't promise you what the outcome's going to be. And then he made me make that promise that I would do something. So we agreed. And we started with road shows. And we took about a staff of 30 out to various locations in the state of Wisconsin, I think 24 of them all together, and started asking millennials and baby boomers questions like, if you were the CEO of a health insurance company, what would you do to make it better for your generation? Or what types of products would you design? And if we asked you to help us build your product, would you do it? And what would it take for you to make that commitment with us? 
Yeah, I think what was interesting about the roadshow is we talked to hundreds of baby boomers and millennials in 24 different towns throughout Wisconsin. And it was unlike any type of research or data feedback that I had ever seen working with health plans big and small. I think the biggest thing that jumped out at me is that they never looked at it as research. They looked at it as they were part of something. And it wasn't just that they wanted to be heard. Uh, they wanted to actually be a part of something bigger than themselves. I was especially surprised with the millennials um, and how engaged they were as well. So after the road shows, we had literally thousands of hours or a thousand hours of uh, video to watch and hundreds of pages that Brian's team combed through to find the nuggets and to identify the themes. And while when we started, I think we thought we might have two different sets of themes between the baby boomers and the millennials, we really ended up with just one. And the three things that came across were one-to-one -one communication, wellness services, and mobile access. So that's where we focused our efforts as far as when we the, the next step in the co-creation, which was bringing groups of customers and non-customers of Network Health together to participate with our employees in ideation labs. And unlike a traditional focus group where someone stands up and asks questions, they sat around a table and worked together to come up with solutions. And they were very open. And if someone didn't like someone else's idea, they said that. Their feelings didn't get hurt, but they worked to make it better together. So it really was that bond between our staff and two different age groups. So when we, uh, one of the things we found that was surprising on, in both groups was the technology. As we talk about millennials, they always have their head down. I have three of them that I'm a mother to, and you know, getting them to make a phone call to me is hard. But they want to be able to call someone when they have a question about things they don't understand, like health insurance. When we got to the baby boomers, it was a little bit the opposite, that they were ready for things like, send me a text message when I have an appointment, or when I'm going to be getting my new member materials, or when it's time to sign up again, or, hey, could you transcribe my phone calls with customer service and then send me a copy of it? So they had lots of good ideas. And so that's what came out, out of the, those ideation labs. And so right now, it's been about a year and a half, I think, since we've worked on those ideation labs. And we're about to bring the groups back together and tell them what we've done. Because remember that promise I made to do something. And so we've expanded our call center hours and we're highlighting that with a couple of groups. We've redesigned our wellness experience so there's a personalized dashboard for every member, giving them the things that they said they wanted to see from the health plan. Also, we're developing a custom mobile app for our wellness services that can track your activity and also your results from your health screenings that we're always asking people to get. And then also uh, something that a lot of plans are doing now, which is making our explanations of benefits easier to understand. And finally was the insight that we got from having the road shows in areas where we, that we weren't serving, where no one knew network health, like Milwaukee. We, we were planning at the time to actually expand into Milwaukee, but we hadn't made that public. So we did road shows there, and that helped us with planning our marketing launch in Milwaukee, which just took place earlier this month. So a couple of the byproducts from co-creation, I would say first is, is that market insight we got from areas that we weren't serving at the time of the research. It was really important to learn that and helped us do a pretty, have a pretty fantastic launch, I'd say, a couple weeks ago. And then uh, I think, Brian, you're going to talk yeah, about the I, other. Yeah, I think one other thing that was an absolute byproduct of this journey, and, and as Penny said, it's been an 18-month co-creation process, which included row shows. It included the ideations. It's included, included concepts, now refinements. A lot of things have been done and are continuing to be being done. But what made this unlike any traditional research I've been involved with in, in the better part of half my career spent in research is the fact that we never looked at anyone as a subject. We never looked at them as a sample size. Uh, there was no hidden mirrors. There were no hidden cameras. There was no nothing. As Penny said, when we went through the ideation process, everyone at the table, whether they were an employee or a customer or a non-customer, were all partners. And as someone who's also spent the other half of his career in branding, I never in a million years could have written better branded content than ultimately came out of this. As I said, it should never be a goal. But the byproduct of hearing these people talk, especially the group that stunned me the most, were uh, non-customer millennials. So these are people that don't do business with Penny's company. 
and are of the millennial age and for them to want to participate in building out new health insurance experiences and products uh, and not be paid for it by the way and not even get free beer or anything was absolutely shocking to me and I think that's a testament to co-creation and making sure you communicate clearly to that and I never could have in a million years written better content that came out of that and we do have a, a, a clip of that that we could show so that you could kind of hear them in their words versus ours but for the sake of time, I do want to skip ahead to that, uh, past that, because I do want to talk about just some key takeaways today. Uh, and if you have any questions about this process and journey we've described today, we can answer them afterwards. But when you think about co-creation, again, it's more of a mindset. It's taking what a lot of you probably already do very well and applying a slightly different lens to it or just evolving it that much further. It's taking a good look in the mirror and understanding that you're willing to be vulnerable, you're willing to listen to what the market has to say, and the other beauty of co-creation, and I've worked on a lot of these projects, not just with Penny, is they can be very small. Um, you can start off with just a group of key customers, or you can go out into different markets or with non-customers. And as long as you know that you don't know what that outcome will be, but you're willing to do something, I think you'd be really surprised at what you'll get when it's all done. So thank you very much. I think we're just done in time. And uh, if there's any questions, uh, we'll be happy to answer them. Awesome. All right, let's uh, uh, have a nice uh, thank you for Brian and, and Penny. Uh, we do have some time for some questions. What questions do you all have? Yes. So um, can you talk about the ideation sessions and what they were like? How did you get people started? You know, you put them around a table or where, how did you do it? Uh, well, we started with some free food, so that helped <laughs> uh, to get people going and talking. But. Uh, Actually, as Penny mentioned, we started with this huge list of, of ideas. And as I said, we had to create a process, and we segmented it down to those three. So when we brought the groups in, we, we showed them some of the tapes of other millennials or other baby boomers that they had seen. And we kind of given them some clarity in terms of where we had gotten here. And I was very specific about something else that we talked about earlier in the presentation was that it's great that everyone has ideas, and we appreciate and respect your ideas, but now we need to think about how we can make these ideas realities and which ones we can't. And what was really interesting is Penny mentioned the technology uh, kind of bridge between the generations. What was really funny to us is the baby boomers told us that if they didn't use uh, text messaging, they couldn't communicate with their millennial children. And there was a lot of things about that where they said that they would be willing to do things with their health plan that they'd never thought of before. So what we did is we, we pushed them a little bit to get the conversation going. But unlike, again, a focus group, we didn't want it to be dictated from the, the customer side. And actually, I moderated those, so I was not representative of Network Health or the different groups as well. So we kind of kept that a little independent. Uh, but what was interesting is, again, and I wish we had time to show you some of this stuff, to see millennial young men choke up about the fact that they don't have network health as a health insurance company. I, I was like, really? I couldn't write this. Uh, and, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and he wasn't paid to say this. Uh, so I think it's just, like I said, is people want to be heard, but the difference with the co-creation versus some of that traditional research is you're actually building something together. And I think that just lended a natural evolution. How many people were in each session? Uh, we didn't have any more than a dozen uh, because we wanted to keep it small enough. And we wanted to keep it a good mix of both sides. And then from Penny's side, you had product developers, you had customer service people, you had sales people, you had some marketers, just so everyone could get a good, well-rounded representation from the organization. I, I just want to add one thing that has also been a bonus of this has been with our employees because having sat in a room hearing what people want from us has made them better at their jobs. They're designing things that are done with the customer in mind and they should have always been that way but boy it's a lot harder when I sat across the table from someone telling me what he wants to not do it. Great. Uh, other questions? Time for one more. Anyone? And it, did I understand correctly? So no honorarium, nothing was paid no. to these individuals. So the what's in it for them is just being part of the process? Yeah, uh, and, and 
Unlike uh, some of the other research that I've heard a little bit about today where you go out into maybe people's homes and stuff like that, we literally wanted to get people in places like a Starbucks, a farmer's market, places where just people were, and we just started the conversation. And believe me, we got some very interesting insight that never made it uh, through. <laughs> Uh, but it was just really people wanted to be a part of something, especially the uh, baby boomer generation, because I felt like uh, clearly this hadn't been their first movement before, and I felt like they, they felt almost a social responsibility to try to make health insurance better. Cool. Neat stuff. Thank you so much for sharing your Thank story you. with Thank us. You. Thank you. Thank you.